Welcome back to First Education. This is Zat. Today I'm going to be talking about OPTT, Ocean Power Technologies. I'm going to go through technical analysis briefly, then I'm going to go through diving through uh, anything that I can find about this company, whether news, investor relations, etc. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow, subscribe, and leave notifications on, and let's just run right into it. On a one week perspective, what we get to see here is an MACD that seems to be curving a little bit down, attempting to go through a reversal last week and got rejected this week. Now what we get to see here on the momentum is that the stock is building strong momentum and the unbalanced volume looks quite bullish as well in this perspective. Only percent R though looks overbought when it comes into one week perspective and the average directional index is coming in near to where you would consider uh, reverses are likely in either direction. If we were to move on towards a one day perspective, what we get to see here is something a little bit different than what we've seen in the one week perspective. It looks like the positive reversal has been attempted uh, around the 24th of September and confirmed on the 25th and moved on towards uh, a really bullish indicator change here. ADX shows and there's a strong potential here and there's a strong uh, trend that has formed already. Bullion percent R though puts this one out overbought so that is as well dangerous there. Momentum looks very strong though and unbalanced volume mirrors the momentum and is very strong. Now when we go on towards moving averages we get to see here that it's actually tempting to go from bearish 30 EMA above 10 SMA to switching that around and creating a bullish spurt. Now one hour, uh, one hour perspective just in case you want to look into what's the next few hours coming in uh, probably what we're going to be seeing here is just a short pullback into the trading action zone and then a bounce back that that is where it looks like uh, it's heading ADX shows in there's a strong trend here oversold momentum strong MACD is dipping downward a little 80 uh, the unbalanced volume looks like it's lost a few shares uh, during the day where it started getting dumping and then gained them all during the evening so it looks still bullish to me moving averages what we get to see here is that it's on the bottom it's expected to trade at 0.88 middle 0.98 and on the top 107 if we were to look into the stochastic what we get to see is that it's actually really high on the fast uh still climbing on the slow so usually that is as well a dangerous sign so we're getting a little bit of warning signs yet it looks really bullish now if we were to look into the trend line what we get to see the bottom of the trend line is probably seeing 0.85 onto the top uh this is a very short trend line that was formed in the middle of September so that's 0.95 on the bottom of the oh, sorry on the, on the bottom of the trend line below that 0.85 and below that 0.74 if we were to look into Fibonacci retracements we get to see there is a support at $1.23 below that $1.89 and the next Fibonacci retrace, uh, retracement distance is $1.47 now we can get to look into the price line to see supports and resistances the current support exists at the $1.28 value Below that, dollar twenty-four. Below that, dollar twenty-one. Below that, dollar eighteen. Below that, dollar fourteen. Below that, dollar ten. Dollar oh seven. And then, dollar oh five. Now, if we were to looking into a resistance here, where we get to see, dollar thirty-one is current resistance. Above that, we get to see, dollar thirty-five. Dollar thirty-eight, dollar forty-seven, and towards the top of dollar fifty. That's a significant mark. Now let's take a quick look into the company itself. This is this is from their latest presentation put up. Uh, at the time, the market cap was twelve point two million, with a revenue of one point seven million. They have thirty-seven employees, including an extensive engineering capabilities. We're gonna go down towards where uh, the target for 2020 is, which is new product introductions and commercial lease options exercised. Now, if we were to go through towards the technologies, we get to see the PB3 Powerboy uh, overview. The floating system generates power from ocean waves. The merged heavy plate spar remains motionless in ocean waves. A float rides ocean waves driving electric generator so basically it's an onboard lithium battery charger that kind of creates energy from waves now we get to see the hybrid power boy we get to see for this one here it's a floating system that generates power from both solar panels uh from backed up by an efficient clean burning silent sterling engine so the power can be used to support surface for subsea payloads 
and it has data transmissions to and from seabeds through a power fiber optic cable and it's towable as well for boat shape hull design now the rest comes in towards the subsea battery solution the anchorless power boy and integrated mooring and um bilical uh, bilical system so that is basically different combinations of solutions that they do offer and so when it comes in towards their strategy they're working with communication science research defense and security and oil and gas but you can get to see the three main are science research science and research defense and securities and oil and gas now we're looking at probably around easily around five percent market share that's the targeted one below there uh there's 100 million for subsea powers, 88 million for data connectivity, and 164 for million for monitoring surveillance. Now, illegal and unreported, unregulated fishing prevention that can as well be used for the OPT service surveillance solution that they do offer with their, uh, I believe this is their Power Boy subsurface as well. So it works two in one. So that might be something they're interested in in terms of coming towards uh, military application or surveillance application. So moving on as well, we get, I'm gonna, just going to go a little bit down towards their highlights. Let's go right here. Recap. OPT is the go solution provider for remote offshore power surveillance and communications. First movers advantage with a strong intellectual property portfolio, strengthening opportunity pipelines, focusing on multi-unit orders, new products that capture more offer a more addressable market experience and discipline management, sustainable product line cool and everything you can check their website here it looks like they have good potential when it comes in towards their future now i'm going to go through quickly sec filings in order to determine what is there yet to be expected so their unveils the subsea battery solution i did mention that that was all the way back in august and that was very exciting back to uh mentioning their 132 kilowatt hybrid power boy and the pb3 power boy so we've got that already covered uh, and then we go on towards institutional buyers. What we get to see on institutional buyers here is uh, a significant increase up all the way in August towards institutional buyers, but it looks like it's radius silent for September. So that is interesting when it comes into our perspective. We get to see as well when it comes in towards their uh, previous filings back in September. They do have an interesting increase of shares uh they entered an agreement for up to 12.5 million shares over 30 months to be sold in terms of offerings so that's something in the future to be considered off uh that they do have as well shelf shares put aside now they did cut down kpmg um that is an accounting firm for uh third party audits and that was mainly because the com uh, well, I'm going to read it here. Dismiss the KPMG LLP as the company's independent registered public announcing firm. Effective immediately, the decision by the audit committee was made on the basis of reducing ongoing costs related to the company's annual auditor service. So they just couldn't forward them anymore. That gives you a little bit of an insight in terms of their financial operations, at least in the very short term. Now, recent quarter highlights, OPT announced two completion, sorry, two complementary new products, the hybrid power boy, uh, as I did mention in the presentation, so nothing new there. The PV31 as well. Uh, they open, sorry, they open a Houston office, strategically located adjacent to the City of Energy's corridor, as a base of regional sales and business developments activities in the support of the Gulf of Mexico, uh, broader U.S. and South America opportunities. And they also have opened, a, expanded a sales team with, uh, sorry, in Indonesia-based South. East Asia representatives to execute the company's customer expansion strategy and they have the radar slash surface surveillance one I did show you in the presentation so that is quite exciting going quickly through towards their revenues what we get to see in terms of cash they have around 11 million moving on towards losses they have around 165 thousand in losses total losses is around 3.4 million so when we're looking into it they still look like they might survive a few extra quarters without any offer now another thing here this is the indonesian based representative that i did mention just a minute ago another thing as well is the expansion to asia pacific market with the hiring of um george h kirby and that again goes towards indonesia's asia pacific model 
They've also gained compliance all the way back in the 20, uh, 24th of August. Uh, PB3 Power Boy as well launched. This is another SEC filing coming into Earth. Good. Another thing going through it is, well, this is another Indonesian Pacific expansion. And the last one, the last piece of uh, information we get for SEC is all the way back in September regarding the offering off maximum price of 0.84. So what we get to see from this company here is that they do have a lot of potential and that is exciting. We get to see though, as it does look really bullish on the chart pace, what we get to see here is that there is a possibility of an offering, but what I would say is it might be worth getting it, getting in for the gains as you get to see it has dropped significantly from where it was below before. And it might be a really nice either scalp or short swing, but in terms of long term, in the head futures perhaps in a year, I do expect an offering to happen in the longer term. What do you think about this sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. You have a wonderful day.